where we talk about uh, the plant of the week. The plant of the week could always be something, it is always something different, uh, but it's always something really fun and exciting. It's either something that is the plant of the month, meaning there's a great deal on buying it. Uh, it's something that we have exclusively here at Rogers Gardens. It's something we have limited quantities of. Uh, so it's always a really fun and exciting thing to introduce to you all. Uh, and I get the honor of doing that on Thursdays. Uh, so uh, today's plant, or the plant of the week today is also going to be the plant of the month, which is really cool. So the plant of the month for April. Uh, so starting tomorrow, it is going to be a buy two, get one free deal. And it is Calibricoa, but it's not just any old Calibricoa. It's the new specialty varieties of Calibricoa that we got in. Uh, so this one here is called Bumblebee, Premier Bumblebee Pink. It's got this beautiful, beautiful uh, little kind of yellowish gorgeous little star shaped inside um, and the other variety is called cha cha diva so how exciting is that name i love it uh, and this is a really pretty almost kind of tie dyed uh, pink and yellow so these are new color varieties that we're just introducing this year uh, calibracoa is sometimes called million bells comes in a lot of different colors a lot of times people could mistake it for a petunia because it does kind of look like a little tiny petite petunia uh, and it is around and really happy and thriving around the same time that petunias are uh, but what I like about these uh, is that they're more of a perennial type so they're what we call a tender perennial so you can overwinter these uh, but they're really really nice and big and bushy uh, and they're not as short-lived as the petunias are uh, so these do really really good in like large pots like this hanging baskets uh, they're a great spiller so they will trail these are brand new and just starting but you can see they've got this nice kind of compact really full of flowers that's why they call it million bells sometimes because uh, you've got all these beautiful flowers in here uh, but they are a what we call a tender perennial so it is something you can overwinter uh, depending on where you live though if you're in a cooler zone uh, usually we take them out by the winter time um, and treat them more like an, uh, an annual uh, in the cooler areas but in warmer areas they thrive really well uh, they are insanely low maintenance which we all love right uh, so you don't have to do a whole lot to them they want good draining soil they want to be um, watered nicely but they're not particularly water hungry uh, they're not a uh, drought tolerant plant in any way that you can plant it and kind of forget it you do have to continue to water it uh, but does really really well in baskets really really well in pots it's a great great spiller so if you've ever heard us talk about how we do our pots up here and we are really famous for our really beautiful uh, pots that we make here is an original design thing that we do um, or in hanging baskets uh, uh, we always want a thriller, a filler, and a spiller. And this works really well for almost all of those things. But you want to have something with some height and something big, something that kind of fills and something that spills. And this is a great spiller. These really will trail very nicely. Um, even alone in a basket, they look beautiful because they will almost engulf the size of the basket and be like a hanging ball of color. So they're really, really beautiful. I really particularly like this one, uh, the Cha Cha Diva. <laughs> so not just because I like to say the name, uh, but really pretty. I love that kind of blushy, almost kind of tie-dyed uh, look that they have to it. The nice thing about these, and you always hear me talking about it all the time, is deadheading plants, uh, taking the spent flowers off to keep them clean and tidy. You don't really have to do that with these. They actually kind of almost self-deadhead. You can a little bit, like if you're really going to be picky and you want it to be perfectly party ready, uh, you can pull off kind of the spent stuff, but they don't really look untidy. And if you don't keep pulling the flowers off they will keep flowering it's not one of those ones I always tell you like with roses and things like that sweet peas make sure you cut your flowers so you get more flowers this one just pumps out flowers which is really great um, and then deadheading is not really super necessary uh, so you don't have to worry about that too much when it comes to fertilizing um, with these ones particularly because they're so big and so full um, Using a granular fertilizer that you don't mix with water would be a little difficult because as you're putting it on, it would kind of get stuck up in the leaves and would be hard to get down into the foliage. Uh, this is a situation when I do like to use something that you water in. Um, in this time, so spring through summer, this is when I want you to use uh, the one with the higher middle number. So uh, this is the Seagrow. It's four 
uh, 20 or sorry, 26, 26. Uh, so you mix this one with water and water it in. It'll be so much easier than trying to use a granular that you sprinkle on the ground. Um, if it is something that you want to try to overwinter, so say you have a really beautiful basket and you want to keep it, uh, then you're going to switch over after the summertime into the all purpose, the 16, 16, 16. Uh, so, and then you're definitely going to slow down probably November is when you're going to start fertilizing and you're not going to really start again until the next year, uh, usually January, February, depending on what your weather is like. And then I would go back to this one using the higher number to really force it to flower. Um, if you do want to overwinter, pinching it back will help for sure. So uh, going through and actually um, getting rid, because you'll get a really tall, hanging, beautiful plant, uh, you want to go back and cut it by about 20% to make it bushy again. If you have one that's a little scraggly, you can also do that. So if something's a little bit too long, you've got a piece that's too long, go to about 20% of the length, go back in and pinch it where you have some new leaflets starting here and you're just going to take that right off just like that uh, that's how you would pinch something back and that'll keep it fuller and that'll keep it more um, you'll get more flowers too uh, than you would on like kind of a longer plant uh, the other thing is uh, sun they want to have full sun at least six hours they will tolerate shade but they'll start to get really kind of leggy and you're gonna get more foliage than flower. Um, if you have it in an area that's six or plus, you're gonna get something that looks beautiful and full like this. It's definitely gonna be a little bit more on the compact side as well. So they will tolerate shade, but they're not super thrilled in shade. You're gonna definitely have less flowers. Six or plus hours would definitely be better. Um, beautiful in baskets, beautiful in pots, great on the ground too. We have uh, some caliber koa that we just planted here in our landscape. Uh, this beautiful orange color and it makes a really great beautiful ground cover they don't really have a lot of pest issues they don't really have a lot of uh, fungal issues or anything you'll occasionally get an aphid here and there uh, so just a regular spray with like insecticidal soap really works but this is not something that I find um, I have issues with um, I love throwing this in pots um, underneath other plants so that way I have a beautiful spilly kind of ground cover something to kind of go over the edges and soften the edges of things so especially my pots with citrus and things like that these are really great for that um, and once they're established they're pretty low water so it's a really really neat easy beautiful plant I absolutely love these these colors are really really fun and something brand new uh, here at Rogers again we do carry them in all different kinds of color plain white purple pink uh, a variety of different colors but these are going to be the ones that are uh, the flower of the month starting tomorrow in April uh, uh, and something exclusive we have here, which is really exciting. So uh, this is live. If you have any questions, you can always throw those questions down below and I'll answer those questions for you. If you stumbled into this later, that's fine. Still put your questions down below and we'll get back to you uh, with answers, uh, either if you're watching on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, Make sure you tag all of your friends that are just those absolute flower lovers. Uh, we all know those people that just have those beautiful hanging baskets in their houses uh, all around their balconies and stuff, or their pots just look impeccable. Uh, this is a really great one to introduce into the garden. Uh, so make sure you tag them down below there, but let's get into it. Do we have any questions? Yes, first question, what is the plant's name? Oh, so <laughs> Calibracoa, sorry. Calibracoa, sometimes we call them, uh, we had to start a little bit later, so maybe I skipped that. It's calibracoa. Sometimes we call them million bells. They are not petunias. They look very similar to petunias, uh, but they are definitely different than petunias, totally different animal, have a similar kind of flower, kind of similar foliage too. But the amazing part about this is it's much longer lasting. So these really are the great spring all the way through the hot summer. They actually like it hot, which is really nice. So a uh, great thing for that hot, like sizzling kind of color because they're always in really beautiful colors. There's even double varieties. These uh, particular ones that are the new um, colors that were just introduced are not doubles, but a double means that you have multiple layers on the inside as well. So those are really beautiful. I love those varieties too. Uh, but Calibracoa is the botanical name, sometimes called Million Bells. This one is Diva, uh, Cha Cha Diva. And then the other one is the Bumblebee Pink. And because these are new, I don't have them even totally memorized. This is the Bumblebee Pink. We will get both of them in these larger containers too. At the moment, we just have the Bumblebee uh, with that beautiful yellow center, but we'll get the bigger containers too. And this would be great if you want to throw it right into a hanging basket and really get started with that kind of pretty beautiful ball of color that'll just be amazing in the summertime, perfect for 4th of July, uh, that really kind of beautiful enveloped basket. Uh, these are great for that because they'll really hang down over beautifully on that. So uh, yeah, Calibrico or Million Bells. And again, that will be the plant of the month 
Uh, starting tomorrow, it'll be buy two, get one free. How do you keep worms or caterpillars off of it? So these don't really have a huge problem with that typically, whereas bugworm on petunias is huge. You always get those little inchy worms on there. I don't find these attract that as much, but if you do have that, BT spray is the best. It's called Caterpillar Killer. Uh, I'll put that name down below, but it's from the Safer brand. We sell it here. Uh, it is organic, so you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to harm anything else other than caterpillars caterpillars um, and if you've got those little green inchworms or little budworms on there and they're tiny and just green they're not going to turn into anything pretty so don't worry about it go ahead and eradicate those not as big of a problem as they are on petunias petunias um, get those really really often also too i find that a lot with my um, trailing ivy geraniums and stuff i get it really bad on those as well and those don't seem to be as big of a problem on these but if it is something in your garden uh, that bt spray is really nice you just spray it onto the foliage you want to do that like every seven to ten days until you don't see any new damage uh, because the first round you're not going to kill everything right you're going to at least leave a couple around and if those breed you're going to have a whole new outbreak all over again so you want to break that cycle by spraying every seven to ten days so you eventually get all the adults the babies the new hatched babies and you don't have that problem that keeps repeating it but safer brand bt spray is my favorite go-to it's not going to harm anything else not going to harm the bees or the ladybugs or any of those kind of things it's only going to kill those nasty little tiny green caterpillars uh, that can be so infuriating <laughs> because they don't turn into anything pretty they're just tiny little white moss nothing special does the plant require lots of watering not really now if you're going to have a hanging basket, hanging baskets are always different because hanging baskets are completely exposed. Uh, they get getting a lot more air. Uh, they're getting a lot more, um, they dry out a lot more. So in a hanging basket, you're definitely going to want to water more. If you buy something like this, that's really, really full, this is gonna definitely dry out a lot faster than planting a couple of these underneath a pot because this is already gonna be pretty well rooted. Uh, if I wasn't afraid of making a huge mess, I would unpot this so you can see how many roots are in here. But something like this, you're gonna water a little bit more, like every three days, uh, especially in the heat. Right now we're pretty cool still. We're still like in the 60s. Uh, so you can water a lot less, like twice a week would be fine uh, but once we hit that summer three times a week would be really good um, once you get these little guys planted into something as they get fuller and fuller uh, you're definitely going to water a little bit more because they are going to get more roots too so the more roots something has and the smaller the container it is the more you have to water it if it's hanging someplace the more you're going to have to water it uh, but as they're smaller uh, they don't these don't really require a ton of water just normally so if you have them planted in the ground for example Example, once a week twice a week during cooler weather is totally fine twice a week to three times a week during hotter weather is gonna be totally fine but in the ground they don't require as much as they do in a pot or a container or hanging basket for sure how many plants are in the big pot together so that's a good question it depends on and with this one looking at it I was kind of checking these out this morning um, it looks like there's maybe I would say maybe four, but honestly, this is not something that I look at and think, ooh, I can easily split this. It would take some finessing to split it up. I would say there's probably, I think there's probably four. I would be really hesitant to split this up though because they're very close. The individual plants that I can feel are super close together. They're not to the edges of the pot. So I wouldn't split this. I would just go ahead and buy the four or four inch instead because you're gonna get one free in there because it's over two. Uh, I wouldn't bother splitting this up. I would only jump this into a basket or even keep it in this container and let it kind of get to be that full pretty ball. I wouldn't try to split this. Some things you can, some things, oh, I wouldn't do that with this. I'd be too hesitant. <laughs> I'd rather just buy it this way uh, and just make it a lot easier on myself. What are some good companion plants for a container? Yeah, so anything that's gonna be full sun. So when you're doing a container, again, we're talking about that filler, that spiller and the thriller. So you want something that's really, really bold and interesting. You want height and you want draping and you want something to create fullness. This is nice because it almost creates fullness and spilling 
uh, just on its own, which is really nice. So uh, sometimes things can kind of double up with each other, but you want to make sure that you're doing something that has similar water requirements. So I would not mix this with succulents because the succulents aren't going to want as much water as this. Uh, and you don't want to overcompensate and water this and then wind up rotting out your succulents. That's definitely going to be an issue. So you want to look at things that have similar things. Um, right now, the things like dahlias are starting to come out, bedding dahlias. These would be great because they need the same kind of sun that could definitely be your thriller. Everybody, if you watch any of my live streams, you know I'm a huge Dahlia fan. Uh, so that would be really great in here. Um, it's it's time for that kind of hot summer popping color. So zinnias would be fantastic as well. Lobelia, uh, especially those really pretty blue. So if you want to do like a really popping kind of crazy color combination, those really blue um, Lobelia would be really pretty mixed with this pink and this yellow. Um, and you always kind of want to recall colors. So you want to kind of pick a palette. Maybe it's going to be like a really hot palette uh, that's going to be kind of beautiful hot colors or you're going to do like the cool blues and the cool kind of pinks. That would work too. I really like how this one has a variety of color in here. So this would even be pretty with the white because you have a little bit of that white speckling. You have a baby pink, you have a hot pink, you have yellow in here. So you have so many colors with this one. This one's going to be pretty versatile. Uh, whereas this one, you've just got the two colors, but those colors are really, really stunning. Um, and that contrast on there is really nice. So it really shows up uh, and you see it from super far away. So um, all of those kind of things would be great. Cosmos too for some height, because uh, those are gonna give you some nice, beautiful height and they come in a great pink with that would be so pretty. Um, even a beautiful white to kind of calm down the color riot that you might have going on is always really helpful too. But you wanna make sure it's stuff that needs uh, similar water. So things that aren't gonna be too water hungry or too drought tolerant, and then you wind up uh, hurting one plant for the sake of the other. Um, and something that has similar light requirements. So think six hours or plus of sun. Um, the nice thing here is if you go through like our upper bedding area, we really stage things where they're going to be happy. So we try to kind of take the guesswork out of it. So if you find something in a space like this, it's in the full, full sun, at home, this plant needs the full, full sun. If you find it in one of our covered areas, that's gonna be a shade plant. And almost everything on the tags usually says. So uh, you can always look at a tag and this on here says exposure, full sun to part shade. I find uh, under six hours, it will tolerate it. It's not gonna die, but you're gonna get a lot less flowers, which is okay if you're all right with that. It's definitely gonna get longer, so it'll be more of a spiller in that situation. Uh, but I would say four hours, at the very least, and you're gonna get definitely less flowers. But when in doubt, ask us too. So you can always come in and ask us. Um, I love it when someone comes up with like a pretty beautiful card of all kinds of different things and they go, will this all be nice together? <laughs> and kind of editing and helping them sort that out. Um, with this, if you're gonna plant it in a pot, you wanna make sure you use a really good quality potting soil. So the Malibu potting soil is my all time favorite. Um, if you're planting them in the ground, just really amending that soil nicely with a really good rich compost. The Malibu compost also works really fantastically uh, to, to kind of give it all that nutrients and fertilizer that it needs. And then just continue to fertilize it through the season um, with both of these. It's the um, Grow More Sea Grow. Um, I would use right now the 42626. Um, and then once we get a little later past summer, then I would switch over to this one. I would end in November and then pick up again in February with this one. Um, if you're gonna overwinter it. Honestly, I've only overwintered uh, Calibrachoa once and eventually I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm done with it anyway. So I just pulled it out and put something else in. So it is really more of a tender perennial. Uh, these actually originate from South uh, America. Uh, so they really like that kind of hotness. So if you think about that, that kind of helps you determine uh, what its needs are. How do you store them after summer or do they die off? So they do die off to a degree. Um, they're definitely gonna get a little bit more rangy looking. Pinching them back will help. Um, if you're okay with that kind of overwintering, I would give it a pinch back. You're gonna go about 20% of the plant and then just kind of let it rest. Just stop fertilizing, especially once we get into the fall, stop fertilizing, kind of just let it do its thing. You're gonna continue to water it. This is not something you can store away like a bulb, uh, like something like dahlia or uh, like any kind of the begonias, the tuberous begonias, uh, is something you're gonna have to continually have to water. Uh, but it's definitely gonna be not as showy and beautiful uh, in the fall and in the winter time. Um, so do that little pinch back um, and then start fertilizing again in February and it will be good.
is the sale on all month. Yes, so it's for the whole month of April, uh, so starting tomorrow, um, and it's going to be on these two colors, the Bumblebee Pink and the Cha Cha Diva. It will include the cachet pots, and we will get the cachet pots of uh, the um, Cha Cha Diva. I'm making sure that's the right one. Yes, Cha Cha Diva is the one. I'm obsessed with this one. Uh, so we will get the big cachet pots of those as well. So those will be part of the deal too. Okay. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. This is so much fun to do with you guys. Uh, we are uh, still in our springtime celebration. So this weekend, uh, the theme is going to be uh, edible gardens, going gourmet gardens. Um, and we're gonna have a ton of different talkers, which is gonna be super, super fun. We'll have David Rizzo talking about growing plants in raised beds for veggies. Uh, we're gonna have somebody who's gonna come in with a book and talk about uh, all the different kinds of growing uh, gourmet vegetables and how to use those. Uh, I will be giving a couple of the talks as well. So will Suzanne. So it'll be something like, so it'll be just like this, but live in person. So you can come see us. Uh, it's always really fun to see your smiling faces. I always really appreciate it. I love interacting with you guys in person. So we'll be doing that this Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if you go to the website, we'll have the whole list of all the different times that we'll be doing that. Uh, and we'll have all kinds of really beautiful, fun things to share with you. Um, and then we always have our live streams on Tuesdays as well. You usually see the lovely Miss Suzanne on Tuesdays and she's talking about all different kinds of fun garden projects and things for you to do and um, how to treat your soil, how to fertilize, uh, kind of breaking down all the things that people tend to be a little bit confused about how to water your plants, all that great kind of stuff. I'm usually showing off the plant of the week uh, with you as well. And we do a uh, Saturday, the first Saturday of every month. So it's coming up on April. Uh, I go over the whole entire monthly checklist. So if you're just like, I have no idea what to do and when to do it, uh, that is such a great one. Uh, it is a little bit long, but I talk about everything from edibles to ornamentals. Uh, to when to fertilize, when to cut things back, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I will demystify your whole entire yard for that month. Uh, those do get stored away too into our Facebook and Instagram page. So you can always look back at other months uh, so you can make sure that you're caught up on everything as well. And make sure you check out our YouTube page. Our YouTube page has so much amazing content that is archived from tons of years back. So I swear to you, if you have a question we have a video about it. Everything from outside to inside to holiday to table settings, all kinds of really fun, amazing stuff there as well. So make sure you subscribe to that and check that out as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be well and be safe and happy gardening, everybody. Bye.